The Weeping Angels are some of, if not the most, iconic monsters from the revival reboot Doctor Who 2005 version of the show, but I think most people will be surprised at how little we know about them. They've only had four headlining appearances as the main villains in the show, and even then, in the EU, they've never really been expanded upon. But there is information here, important information, as I have a feeling these guys may be showing up at least quite a bit here and there in the future of the show. The Weeping Angels first debuted in Series 3's Blink, released in 2007 and written by Stephen Moffat. Great writer, love that guy. This story is unique in a way. We like to call these Doctor Light stories because either the Doctor doesn't or barely appears in these episodes. They provide a unique perspective, add more to the lore and universe, and also allow our main stars to have a holiday every now and then. We don't get many of these nowadays, but I understand why. This episode centers mostly around Sally Sparrow, a new character who is actually adapted from a 2005 Doctor Who annual story written by Stephen Moffat. I actually have this one and arguably I prefer it to the episode. It's quite neat. But we're not here to talk about the human characters, we're here to talk about the villains. The Weeping Angels are first introduced here and we get to learn quite a bit. The Weeping Angels, otherwise known as the Lonely Assassins, are one of the oldest races in the universe. They are quantum locked, meaning they only exist when they are not being observed. Now this sounds like a lot of gobbledygook, but actually it's pretty simple. Allow me to explain in this simplified graphic. Look, no move. No look, move. When the Weeping Angels are being looked at, they turn completely to stone, unable to move even if they want to. It's not a choice, it's a fact of their biology. It's an evolutionary method of survival. If anything looks at them, then they freeze. However, when they aren't being looked at, well, they move pretty fast. Insert sound effect. The show usually goes so far with this concept that they count the audience as something observing the Weeping Angels, meaning we don't get to see the move either. In fact, in Blink, the audience has no idea what the true form of the Weeping Angel even is. We just know that when they freeze, they look like this. And that is the reason why they're weeping as well, so they don't accidentally look at each other. See, it's all very well thought out. But I think something that gets glossed over too much is not just how fast the Weeping Angels are, but how intelligent. These creatures are not mindless, they are cunning and clever. If you look below the surface, we actually learn quite a lot about the Weeping Angels here, so let me just go over it real quick. If you get touched by a Weeping Angel, you get sent back in time, which allows the Weeping Angel to absorb your potential energy the potential of the life you may have had turned into Artron energy. Artron being the Doctor Who term for time, basically, more or less. Weeping Angels can also absorb electricity or all types of energy in general. This is presumably how they sustain themselves. Weeping Angels have a sort of telekinesis or telepathic ability, remember this for later, and arrived on Earth sometime in the past, meaning they have at least some level of interplanetary travel. The Weeping Angels goal is to get to the TARDIS to absorb all of the energy within it. However, the Doctor tricks them into looking at each other and bada bing bada boom, they are saved with a stinger cliffhanger question mark of footage of random statues all over the city, implying that maybe all of them are weeping angels. Ooh. Unfortunately, as time has gone on, this mystery has been reduced slightly as in all of the appearances subsequently, no weeping angel has looked like a regular statue, which is a shame. Instead, they've all looked like this, which makes sense, you know, they're weeping angels they gotta be weeping angels but at the same time there's some cool stuff you can play around with here someone should do that now for many people what i have just described is the full extent to their knowledge about the weeping angels and understandable blink was a massive success i think it won like five baftas and this is where most people's interest was peaked but what if i told you there was more so much more. The Series 5 Weeping Angel 2 parter Time of Angels and Flesh and Stone is a game changer for what we know about the Weeping Angels and most of it comes in the form of this book. The Book of the Weeping Angels written by Raston Jonovich, someone whose knowledge eventually drove him mad. Now this book's existence is a mystery unto itself and not anything is really known about its contents or its author. Originally Stephen Moffat said the author was meant to be one of the soldiers in the episode that got sent back in time but that part was scrapped and every soldier that we know of either got their neck snapped or was erased from existence so it definitely can't be that however the main piece of information we learn here is that the image of an angel becomes itself an angel. What this means is every TV recording, image, even drawing of a weeping angel turn 
themselves into real weeping angels. But not only that, the telepathic part of the weeping angel is further explored in this episode, with the weeping angels being kind of able to possess people, literally taking them over by reflecting themselves off the eye and therefore becoming themselves a weeping angel. The eyes are the door to the soul, is the explanation given in the episode. It's kind of crazy. Additionally, the weeping angels are able to kill people and use their voices to communicate with other people, such as they do with Angel Bob. And yes, I said kill. The angels in these episodes are a lot more threatening and violent, as instead of sending people back in time, these guys just straight up snap people's necks like twigs. On the negative side, we see an angel move, removing that mystique from the previous episode, but you know, we move. We move. The angels here are also searching for a power source, and we see what happens to them if they don't get one, devolving into this unrecognisable mess. In my opinion, they actually look scary in this form. They worship the Kraken Time, which is a hint that the Kraken Time is actually the TARDIS' energy, considering that's what they were after in the previous episode. However, despite adding all this new information and abilities to the lore, the Time of Angels does very little to provide backstory to the creatures and how they came to be. The same can be said about Angels Take Manhattan, which adds in these little rascals, the cherubs and also the Statue of Liberty. That's crazy. But mostly the episode plays on what we already know about the Weeping Angels. Here though, they are even more conniving as they've figured out a way to farm humans with this horrific hotel. It's genuinely quite a good concept. Great job, Steve Moffat. Also, apparently New York is swarming with these guys, so be careful, Americans. The Village of Angels is the latest episode the Weeping Angels appeared in as the primary antagonist, and unlike the previous two, we get a few more hints at the Weeping Angels deeper past. Here the angels serve as agents of division, an ancient time lord cult, society, something. Now we'll get into a bit more later, but the Weeping Angels and the Time Lords connection has been theorised for quite some time now, and here it gets even more pronounced with Doctor Who literally turning into a Weeping Angel at the end of the episode. However, this is just to transfer the Doctor across dimensional thresholds, and is not an actual origin for the Weeping Angels. It's more of a misdirect than anything. To be honest, this doesn't really mean anything. The Weeping Angels are also shown to be able to hide in people's subconscious, as in they literally bring their physical form into someone's mind. That is crazy. And also, they're even more telepathic than before, being able to read people's mind and also use their own voice against them, like psycho project. It is crazy. This is a crazy episode. You wouldn't have thought, but you know, here we are. But as I briefly mentioned before, fans had speculated a connection between the Weeping Angels and the Doctor's own race, the Time Lords, for many years now. And from what I've seen, this started out with The End of Time Part 2, where Rassilon makes reference to the Weeping Angels of old when talking about these two, one of whom may be the Doctor's mom? Whatever, man. This got people thinking that maybe the Time Lords created the Weeping Angels as a punishment? In the anniversary special The Five Doctors, Rassilon transforms Barusa into a statue, and much later on in Hellbent, we see Weeping Angels in the cloisters next to the sliders. There is a connection there, but I don't know. I don't think Stephen Moffat, the creator and primary writer of the Weeping Angels, has it first fully mapped out yet, so I would be hesitant to fully connect those dots. The angels also appear in cameo roles in other episodes such as The God Complex and The Time of the Doctor, but these are middling and unimportant. However, there is one cameo which is definitely not, and it comes from something I would imagine many of you have never seen before, or even heard of. Class. <laughs> Remember class? I should do a full video on this. Appearing at the very end of the final episode and teasing the never made second season, the Weeping Angels are shown to be the masterminds of the evil governors. Apparently they were waiting for a glorious day, also known as the arrival. Presumably this would be an invasion of Weeping Angels? The exact details aren't really known. In interviews with the creator of class, season 2 was meant to delve back to the Weeping Angels home planet and origin and much much more, but it was all scrapped. It makes you wonder, why didn't they just do that in the first season that they already had greenlit. Now I personally already thought that this had been explored already, not in an episode but just like somewhere in Doctor Who. I had a very clear and distinct memory of at least a very bare bones origin story explained. In my head it was through cave drawings or something, is that ringing a bell for anyone? In researching this video I was sure it was the Doctor Who fact file like behind the scenes extras, extras menu type thing, you know the monsters fact file, but upon watching that it didn't have 
have any of that at all. So if any of you know what I'm talking about, leave a comment below. Maybe this is like a Mandela effect or something. Maybe I'm just losing my mind. It is what it is. Weeping Angels have also been making more and more appearances in the audio medium of Big Finish and they've been meeting all of the classic doctors at this point. I've not listened to every one of these so far, but from what I've heard, I personally don't find them as effective without the visual aid or effective in any way but you know the fan consensus is that they fit well in the audio medium apparently with their sound cues being played to simulate the movement eh. also i think i should probably mention that in the class big finishes yes there is class big finish there's big finishes of everything there is no weeping angel follow-up to that subplot so far maybe that will come in the future in which case maybe i'll talk about it maybe i won't man who cares about the class big finishes i mean people don't even care about class but anyway, on to the future. Do I believe the Weeping Angels will show up anytime soon? Well, after playing a prominent role in Series 13 and being featured in cameos many times before that, I do predict they'll appear here or there in the upcoming RTD2 era. Most likely not in the 60th, but if they do, guess who made a video about it? Uh -huh. But in Series 14, I would expect at least a name drop. Whether they'll make another appearance as an episode headliner is to be seen, and to be honest, I hope they will because as I said, the Weeping Angels, in my opinion, are the most iconic new Who Doctor Who monster. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Remember to leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. <laughs>